Talked me and turned out the light Kept me safe and sound at night Little girls depend on things like that Brushed my teeth and combed my hair Had to drive me everywhere You were always there when I looked back You had to do it all alone Make a living, make a home It must have been as hard as it could have been And when I couldn't sleep at night Scared things wouldn't turn out right You would hold my hand and sing to me Sing with me on this part, Daddy
Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Good afternoon. My name is Jack. I'm on staff here at Grace Church, and I had the opportunity to meet the family nine months ago, too soon ago. I wish we could be on a happier occasion, but I want you guys to know, all of you, that you are loved, that you are prayed for, and it's an honor for me to serve you guys in whatever way I can. We're going to honor Kelsey's life today. We have come together today to honor her 
situations like Kelsey's are, are never easy to process. It's extremely difficult. And as I alluded to earlier, it wasn't that long ago when we got, gathered together to mourn her sister, Kayla. It would be irrational for us to think that we could make this day joyous or that it, we couldn't have feelings of anger or bitterness or contempt. And I want you to know that that's okay today. Teresa and I, we were talking about that earlier. It's okay to feel that anger. It's okay to feel that sadness. To put it plainly, situations like this suck. They're not fair. No one should ever have to go through situations like this. Some of you are searching for answers today. And I want you to know that it's okay to ask questions. It's natural to wonder why things like this have to happen. Why do some suffer and not others? What is the purpose of life that is cut so short in this fashion? The questions that race through our minds are vital to our understanding of both life and death and our natural responses from our human nature. In the story, in the Bible, there's a story about a man named Lazarus. And, and Jesus would raise this man, Lazarus, from the dead. But before that miracle, though, as Jesus was met by Lazarus' family to tell them about their brother's death, it says that Jesus was moved to tears. Shortest memory verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. He was moved to tears. The one that had the ability to raise other people from the dead still felt incredible sadness and grief over the loss of his dear friend. Here's another truth I know from Scripture. In Psalm 34, the author states this, that God is close to the brokenhearted. There's no prerequisite in this. There's no caveat in this. There, there's no way that you have to earn this. There's no terms and conditions. It's a promise. Are you feeling brokenhearted today? God is with you. Are you feeling an indescribable loss over a mom, a sister, a daughter, a friend? God is with you. He is close to you, and it is his desire to give you a peace that the Bible says goes beyond all human understanding. Yes, there are questions, and yes, there is probably anger, hurt, and frustration. But I want you to know today that he can handle those emotions and feelings, and he feels them with you. After speaking with the family this week, and I'm sure many of you know this, Kelsey did not have it easy. As it says in her obituary, she faced bigger demons and went through more hell than I would think that any of us will ever fully understand. We could talk about that. But here's something else I learned about Kelsey she loved the people in her life fiercely. If you were a cop coming to arrest Carissa and Kelsey found out about it, then you better watch out. We may hear that story in fuller detail later. I'm not so sure. She absolutely loved the people in her life. And you know what? That's what we get to focus on today. You are most likely here today because Kelsey had some kind of impact on your life, and you love her too. So you know what? You're correct to say that she wasn't perfect. She had her issues. We all do. She had her demons and so on, and we don't have to ignore that. But today we get to focus on who she was in her heart and the love that she carried for those closest to her. There is so much more to Kelsey's life than her death, and that is why we are here today. Yes, we will mourn, and yes, we will be saddened by the loss of a sister, a daughter, an aunt, and a friend. But I want you to know today that there's no right or wrong way to mourn. Some mourn by the shedding of tears, while some don't cry at all. Some sit and reflect quietly upon the life of their loved one, while others find joy in sharing the stories and memories with others. Again, there is no wrong way, but I truly believe that one of the blessings that the Lord gives us in these times, is each other as family and friends. And we remember that it is God who comforts us in our time of loss, as it says in 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4. through 4. Paul says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our time of affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. We're here for each other today. Let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for this time, even though it's sad and it's heartbreaking and it's, Father, beyond any of, our, any of us to be able to be strengthened about it. Lord God, I thank you that you give us each other. That, Lord, we don't have to ever go through it on our own or by ourselves. Or, but when I look around this room, I see family, I see friends, I see loved ones that we can rely on, that we can get strength from, Lord God, that in our times of weakness, we can make each other strong. So I thank you for these memorial times. I thank you for these gatherings. I thank you for these families and these friends today that are here to support this family that has lost a dear one and loved one in their life. So as we celebrate Kelsey today, I pray, Father, that you would be what your word says you are as the God of comfort, as the God who gives peace, as the God who gives love in every circumstance and in every situation. Thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to hear the obituary. I believe John is going to come up and read that. Afterwards, I just want to make sure you know that we're going to open up the mic. If anyone has any stories or a memory of Kelsey that you would like to share, we're going to make that time available too. But, John, if you're ready, my friend. Good afternoon, everyone. Kelsey Leanne Chambers passed away on January 28, 2023, in Des Moines, Iowa, surrounded by the ones she loved. She was born in Springfield, Missouri, on August 26, 1992, to Teresa uh, Michelle Knapp and Richard Lee Chambers. She is survived by her two beautiful children, Jackson, six, Bryson, four, her nine plus siblings, Carissa, Greg, Autumn, Summer, Jonah, or Nikki, Carrie, Bob, Richard, Tyler, and Braxton. Many cousins, CJ, Josh, Jonah, Riley, Sophia, and Aiden. Her nieces, Bella, Maddox, Nova Lee, Vega June and her nephews, Jaden, Alex, Xander, and Owen, and her mother, Teresa Loomis, stepdad, Patrick Heemstra, and Wayne Loomis, father, Richard Chambers. Kelsey was the third out of the group of four girls, the, on- the only blonde, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed one of us, nicknamed Blondie. She was always either out causing all kinds of trouble or being a, hy- a hypochondriac, which I kind of understand. <laughs> But no matter where her life took her, she was there on one call. <clears throat> so she'd kill or hurt anyone that's, that hurt someone close to her. She was a firecracker that could go off at a drop of a hat, and if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't, and you wouldn't want to be the one to piss her off. <clears throat> Kelsey liked to gravitate towards people, new and old. Anyone who knew Kelsey knew she loved and, and loved hard, even if it meant she was engaged four times a year, if not more. <laughs> she loved to love and wanted to be loved more than anything. Anytime we see her with, anytime we see her, she would have new friends with her. There was no social anxiety to Kelsey, but it's hard. To, but it would be hard to say it was it was it was an easy life for her or always made the right choices, would be a lie. Kelsey had demons bigger than most of us could ever imagine. These demons found a home inside Kelsey and took over. She was, lo- she was a lost soul here on earth and always searching for her next bit of happiness. We know now that she'll be internally happy, surrounded by the ones she loves, even if she has to fight her way there. Our family finds peace in knowing Kelsey isn't alone. She has her beautiful baby and sisters, Kayla and Kimmy, with her to help cause trouble until we are able to be with them again. Kelsey is preceded in death by her baby, Derek Wayne Chambers, sister Kayla Jackson, stepsister Kimberly Heemstra, Aunt Sherry, Grandma Jeannie, and Granny. So I've known Kelsey for, well, it would be me and Chris have been together since 2011. And she lived in, you know, before she went to Iowa, she was in Springfield a lot. So I actually got to spend quite a bit of time 
uh, with Kelsey. So it's, she, she did, she loved, she did love everyone. But mental illness is something that is extremely important that is probably bigger today than any, than it's ever been. It's hard to control. Addiction is also something that is extremely overpowering. But she is out of pain now, and she is resting. So she is no longer, we don't have to worry about her now and what she's going to be doing next. Thank you. This little girl. She was always my troublemaker. She was the one that we had to make the rules for. There was, she, she was. Krista was the dictator. Kayla was just bossy, just, just bossy. And Carrie did no wrong ever because her daddy covered her butt on everything. <laughs> but that blonde child, boy, was she a pistol. <laughs> Until the very end. She fought coming into this world. When I was with her when she went out, and she fought going out too. She's strong. And I'm thankful that I have my babies. I'm thankful that I got the time that I had with her. And thank you, Rick, for giving her to me. Because I know she had problems, but she was my little terrorist. So thank you. Thank you. Just again, want to invite any of you that would like to come share a, a memory or anything that Kelsey meant to you or story. Just want to give time for that. Grew up with all these. Wayne's, Wayne's my uncle. They're my mom on the Loomis side, so we were all real close when you all were out in that trailer. Chell, she saved me a few times, so I had to be here. It's hard that I couldn't help her, that I couldn't save her. I've been in a lot of trouble, like Kelsey. We did a lot of trouble together. I fight something in my head every day. I've been off drugs for a long, good minute. It's not easy. Whatever she was fighting in her head, sometimes she, even with God, as much as I trust him, this is the devil's planes that we're on. And that's his job, is to hurt us. And someone like Kelsey in my eyes, and me and other people that fight, The devil knew she loved God, and he did everything he could to take her and stop her. But her love was just, I don't know what it is about this family. 
I just lost my, my cousin, Jesse, also, for the exact same th reason. There's just people I don't want to go on off of this earth, and she was one of them. And I'm mad, too. I'm mad because I can't go and bring her back. Basically, my, my story is, is that she saved me. She's the only person in my 35 years on this earth that actually went and bailed me out of jail. She was wild coming into the jail to pick me up that they actually ran her ID to make sure she was in any trouble before they let me out, which is just a thing now, actually, come to find out down there. They run everybody that comes to pick someone up. Probably because of her, honestly, but uh, I didn't know she was in Iowa until a month before this happened, and she told me to go pick a Mustang up from Granny. I'm pretty sure a Mustang that was not legal and wanted me to drive with no driver's license to Iowa to pick her up and bring her back to Missouri with my four-year-old and my wife, which I can't do that, but... <laughs> I don't know most of you out here, but I love every one of you because you loved her and you that means you all loved to some expect that she loved too. I just, I was, that's it, man. So. I get this frantic call at work, screeching. You have to come and save me. She's gone crazy. Kelsey is not scared of anything or anybody, except for this man right here, because she tried to walk through him and couldn't. That's when she decided, maybe I, I'm a little scared. But <laughs> she had been messing with Carrie all afternoon. All afternoon. Carrie could not take any more. She had enough of her sister up to here and beyond. And her bedroom set just perfect right there in the corner next to the bathroom. Kelsey's calling me from the bathroom because Carrie had her locked in the bathroom because she had a butcher knife and she just screeched underneath and you'd hear Kelsey screech a little louder all because Kelsey wouldn't leave her alone and let her play her game. No. no. <laughs> the, oh, this is another time. Oh, this is the real reason? <laughs> Swiffer was on cottonwood and Caleb had it up and went like this pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey was a firecracker. If it could happen, Kelsey would do it. She could do it. And get away with it. Away with it. I still don't know how she's not in prison or never went to prison. But if one of her sisters called, she was there, and there was usually a lot of escalades behind her. And it was like clown cars with people crawling out of it because she was protecting her sisters. I've seen it happen. When she did, when she tried to protect Kayla that time in Republic. It was beautiful. I was so proud. <laughs> So 
So I grew up with all these girls, and I'm pretty sure Carrie still does no wrong. But um, I also remember a mom that, you know, covered our butts probably more times than she should have. And uh, I don't know that mom ever, you know, knew about this, but I'm pretty sure me and Carissa, like, almost killed Kelsey on accident once. When we were teenagers, we used to think it was cool to make ourselves pass out, and I remember Kelsey bugged us and bugged us and bugged us. So finally, okay, we did it. And she thought it was cool until she had an asthma attack. And mom wasn't home, and we couldn't find the inhaler. And ultimately, I don't remember the details, but we found the inhaler finally. And uh, she went on to raise more health than probably any of us ever have. Damn sure more than you know, me and Chris ever did. But I, I remember that pretty, pretty vividly. Like she was, she was all smiles until she couldn't breathe. <laughs> This is why we do this. Did Kelsey so much? I wish she was back with us. And I miss her. Precious. Come on, man. Republic, okay. Uh, this was a long time ago in Republic. I remember I kicked her phone like really hard once. She hate you, man. He footballed her brand new iPhone. Like she had just bought it. And she goes, oh, yeah, Kelsey? Yeah, she, she made is. me mad. No. <laughs> and I broke her phone and she got really mad. Oh. Like really mad. It was the grand three time. <laughs> it sounds about right. Yeah, it was even for them being... I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> There's something about laughter that helps heal our souls a little bit. It's why these stories are so important. It's why it's so important to stay together as family and friends and not forget, but to continue to share and think about those times that made us laugh. And it's so precious. I don't want to rush this time. Would anyone else like to share? Come on in.
My name's Richard. Sorry to bother you guys. Um, I'm Kelsey's father. Um, Wayne's a good guy. He helped raise her. I don't <clears throat> have a, I'm not good with speeches or saying what's on my mind. I keep everything to myself. Unlike my daughter, she'll tell you everything. Um, she lets you know if something was wrong. Um, I did spend a lot of time with my daughter. A lot of y'all didn't know that. Um, whenever she had a really bad problem and she couldn't talk to her mom or sisters, she would call me. I'd ever come over, we'd sit down and we'd talk. I gave her the best advice I could give her. Um, I would think about what I did in my past to help her out to not do what I did or what her mom done. <laughs> um, she was a she was a good child. She was, she was a good daughter. Um, she did have a lot of demons. That I do admit. Um, Y'all talking about all these stories and everything. I got a couple of them. Um, when she was real little, right after she was born, um, she'd have a hard time going to sleep. Her mom would bring her in here. <laughs> your child, you take, you know, not being mean. She said, your child, your turn. I said, okay. And she would laugh every time it happened. My daughter, when she was little, she'd go to sleep on my chest. And this is when I found out you need to wear a shirt with Kelsey. She would grab handfuls of chest hair and rip them out. You talk about being half asleep and waking up real quick. <laughs> And then um, there was one incident uh, back when they lived in Rogersville. This came to mind when Carrie, Carissa, and Kayla. Tessa got up one morning getting the girls ready for school, and I think I just got off work. And Kelsey, you all know Kelsey. You know her attitude. She wasn't going to school that day. And she made it clear to everybody in the house she wasn't going, she wasn't leaving her bed. And I think Carrie shared a room with her, if I'm correct. And you probably remember this. Her and Tess are going back and back and forth. Well, you're a blankety blank, da 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 this, and da 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 na 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 na. And Tess comes in, comes and gets me. Hey, your turn, you take care of it. She won't get out of bed and go to school. And I said, okay. I looked at Tess, I said, anything goes. She goes, yeah. I walked in there, said, Kelsey, get up. It's time to go to school. I'm not freaking done. Oh, okay. She laid back in bed, so I grabbed her mattress, flipped her completely out of bed, and she was like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I've got all kinds of memories and stuff with the girls. Um, I'm not trying to take that from anybody. I just wanted to share that with you guys. But as for Kelsey and I, um, <laughs> She spent, uh, when she came back to Missouri, she stayed with me for three days. Uh, she did not like my ex-wife at the time when we were married. Um, my daughter made it clear to me that if she didn't like somebody I was with, I wasn't supposed to be with them. I did get a divorce. Um, and then later on, she came and stayed with me at my old place for a while. And she was gone. She just didn't say nothing. She just took off and tried to find her, and then when she finally called me, we talked a little bit. And that's just the way my daughter was. She was there, and then she wasn't. That's just the way she was. She she loved everybody, you know? She really did. She loved her sisters a lot. You know, she loved her brother. Um, there was an incident with uh, Richard and the girl that he was seeing, and I told her, don't go do nothing dumb. He She wanted to go down there, and. Stomp a mud hole on somebody. I told her, I said, you can't do that legally. But then again, you are our kid, so it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think a lot of her deal was she wanted to, in her mind, she wanted to, you know, if she called you and talked to you about something personal, it was more of the fact that she wanted you're okay. It wasn't the fact that, you know, she was going to do it regardless whether you told her no or yes. <laughs> she just did it. And I, I hate to say it, but uh, unfortunately, she had her mom and I's genes, and that made for a bad combination for somebody. Um, I mean, I'm getting old, so I can't 
run quick enough anymore. Ain't that right, Wayne? <laughs> but I do, I, I do love her a lot, and I really wish she wasn't gone. So I missed the phone calls. I still look at my phone. I still got her number in my phone, thinking she's going to call me. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, because every time, every time she'd call, it'd be a different number. Like, who's this? One time she messaged me. It was funny. Uh, she woke me in the middle of the night, called me. I was like, who's this? She goes, Springfield Police Department. I was like, oh. Yeah, she messed with me big on that one. I actually had got, I'd gotten in my truck to go down to Springfield Police Department to get her. Oh, it's a joke, Dad. It's, it's not funny. <laughs> now it's funny. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share some of the stuff, guys. The writer of Psalms, David, said in Psalm 61, 1 through 3, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against my foe. Every single one of us in this room carries burdens. We all have days, weeks, some of us even years that just don't make sense. Some of us overcome them, and some of us are overcome by them. We also know that life is full of questions. Some of us find answers and some of us have questions that forever go unanswered. We have all felt the sting of death and today Kelsey's death reminds us of how fragile life really is. None of us knew that we would be gathering in this place on this day for a memorial service of Kelsey. But I believe in a God of mercy and grace and I believe that that God of mercy of grace will bring comfort to each of you today. I think all of us would agree that Kelsey's death is a tragedy, and yet I'm reminded of this verse from Hebrews. It says, Let us come boldly before the throne of our gracious God, and there we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need us. All of us need that grace and help today. That can only come from turning our eyes to Jesus we must come with a confidence and know that God's grace is all sufficient and nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love that God alone offers through his son Jesus. Romans eight thirty eight thirty nine 39 says it this way, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't and life can't. The angels can't and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you hear it? God withholds his love from no one. He loved Kelsey all the days of her life, and he will love you all the days of yours. The same God that reached out to Kelsey is reaching out to every single one of you. And even in the midst of our brokenheartedness, in the midst of dealing with the pain and stress of losing someone in the prime of their lives, all through the Bible we see people dealing with stress and how they handled it. David wrote over and over of being in a state of just being overwhelmed. And one day he came to find out that his wife and children had been captured and carried away. The Bible tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord. In Psalm 40, this is how David felt like he could deal with stress and how we should wait. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of a slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of, 
of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. You don't have to carry this grief alone. You don't have to carry this loss alone. God's promise to Paul is the same promise that he gives each and every one of us, that God's grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in weakness. He knows your heart today. He knows your frustrations. And even in our grief and our sorrow, he hears. And he not only hears, but we can also know that he helps and God heals. It's been said that death ends the physical, but never the spiritual. Death may end lives, but it will never end relationships. Even though Kelsey is no longer with us, our relationship with her remains. Cherish your memories you had with her. That keeps a family a family. Death cannot take that away from you. To Kelsey's family and friends, God understands your heart. He lost his son also. Our hope lies in the fact that someday those who love God and have accepted Christ will all be in heaven. I alluded to earlier the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Before he performed that miracle, he was having a conversation with Lazarus' sister, Martha. And during that time, he made this statement. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He is asking you today, do you believe this? Every one of you should answer this question at some point. Maybe it's not today, but my sincere hope and prayer for every one of you is that you will say yes to Jesus. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his eventual departure, he told them, truly you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn into wonderful joy when you see me again. You have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. My friends, today my prayer for you is that you would know a peace that can only come from Jesus in heaven. As I've already said, he knows what you are feeling, he knows what you are going through, and he knows your heartbreak. And the promise is true that he is and he will always be with you. Let's pray. Father, again, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for your words. I thank you for the peace that only you can give. I thank you for the, st- the stories and the memories that were shared today, Lord God, and the laughter that was shared. I pray that that would continue. Lord God, I pray that this family would strengthen one another. Lord God, that they would encourage one another, that they would be encouraged by you, that they would feel your handprint on their life. And as we read that scripture, that they would know that nothing, absolutely nothing could separate them from the love that you have for them. May every single person in this room feel that and know that today. Thank you for being with us here. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. As we close our time together, we're going to watch a video that the family put together. If you'll give me a couple of seconds, I'm going to go back and turn that on. But after that video is concluded, that will conclude our service together. You all are free to stick around for a little bit and share any more stories. But thank you for being here today on behalf of the family. Thank you for sharing. And we'll watch that video in just a second. Times has changed and times are strange Here I come but I ain't the same Mama, I'm coming home Times go by, seems to be You could have been a better friend to me Mama, I'm coming home Go alone, 
Yeah!